it's uh, it's time to get this thing back together, which is exciting. It, it wasn't apart for too long. Uh, as we do that, I have to bring up our dear old friend, Bulkhead712. Uh, now, previously, I, I did a little explanation on a goof I made and how to drill out rivets. And it turns out that's the goof that keeps on giving. I got an email from someone um, who had a great point, and it was that now that I've drilled these rivets out, uh, I have countersunk holes, and if I'm going to put the rear spar of something on this and attach that, I have a, a flush surface going up against a countersunk surface, which means there's a gap hidden in the middle of this rivet system, which you absolutely do not want. Uh, one of the main provided strengths of a rivet is shear strength. And you only get that if your pieces are mated flush or in the instance of a dimple, if both pieces have a dimple and you have a nested dimple, a gap anywhere in that system uh, really is, is dangerous to that whole rivet system. Um, luckily for me, I did some late night research when I saw this email uh, and, and the holes that don't get rivets will actually be drilled out for bolts. Um, whew right? But I also discovered um, that really I shouldn't have any rivets here at all. Uh, not yet anyways. This tie down bracket, though the plans, which is what I was following, kind of indicate that we're going to put some rivets in here and save some out until uh, we attach the vertical stabilizer. The instructions are quite clear. Don't do any of it until you're on the vertical stabilizer portion of the program. I'm going to leave it attached for now. Uh, I've corrected what I had wrong, um, but what I think is going to happen is I'm going to have a lot of difficulty locating these holes uh, from the opposite side now when it comes to attaching that stabilizer. I guess we won't see until that part. Now that's a few weeks, months, years down the road. Anyways, onward, we're going to start building this thing back up. catch me shaking my head while I'm doing the dimpling of the bulkheads, it's one simple reason. I recently went through great lengths to adjust the angles of all these to get the fit so that this would bolt back together fairly seamlessly and now I have to uh, kind of bend some of the flanges in order to get in there to place a dimple. And I'm really concerned that we've got too much flange bending um, and I don't want to fatigue the metal. So. Upon clicking the rear fuselage together and taking a look at the tall walls and, and tub-like structure of the aft fuselage, I knew in an instant that I would not be able to rivet this thing together on my own. So once again, I leaned on the help of a friend, I reached out, and when our schedules aligned, I was able to get him over for some help riveting.
Okay. Go. Yeah. Beautiful. Go. Beautiful. Upset. One thing I failed to account for is the uh, very tips of all these J-stiffeners are extending uh, where the bulkheads and skins all start to transition into the baggage area and the cockpit area. So I've masked them off. We're going to shoot them with my primer pistol real quick. Uh, just make them look white and, and in a nice and tidy way uh, and then keep moving on riveting this thing together. Give that a little bit of time, then we'll hit it with a teeny bit more paint. Two coats. It's relatively easy riveting, but there's a lot of it. And it, it is a lot slower than the pace I was moving through it uh, on the bottom yesterday with someone to help me out. Overall, they're coming out great. Uh, I think I'm going to be here for a couple hours, but I don't think it's going to be overly difficult, just a little long. I'm excited to see what it's going to look like with some of these Clecos replaced with rivets, get the sides looking a little more finished, uh, and I'm really excited to get started on the center section shortly here.
riveting is done. And uh, <laughs> the solo portion of that took a while. Um, we've been at it for quite some time. 99% of it looks fantastic. I, I did wind up with a ding and it breaks my heart. Um, I'm hoping it's something the painters can take care of. If not, oh well, there's nothing I can do. My fuselage has its first doorting. Uh, it's not bad. And, and again, the rest of it looks absolutely fantastic. So uh, I'll just try not to do that again. All right, the riveting on the aft fuselage is done. I'm very happy to be able to say that. Uh, that took some time and a lot of energy. Uh, it really does look fantastic. Uh, the, the rivet gun in one spot got away from me for a second, wound up with a little ding. Uh, I'm hoping it's something the painter can help uh, disguise. Uh, if not, there's not much I can do. I guess my fuselage has its first door ding. Um, again, other than that, I'm blown away. It looks fantastic. The only thing to do now is to start the center fuselage. Um, let's take a look at what that's going to look like. Hey, before we get to the center fuselage, uh, a note. And I come to you for a little further along in my build than what's shown in the video. Yet, even while I was riveting together the aft fuselage, there was a discussion brewing online, one that now is in full force and, and pretty much impossible to ignore. It's that of laser cut parts and subcontractors of Vance. Now, for those of you who haven't seen this, I will briefly explain that in the last few years, Vance has seen an unprecedented demand in kits. After what I understand was some careful consideration, they selected some subcontractors to help them form some parts. Now, Vans mostly uses punches and forming machines to create parts. Uh, other organizations, and the one that they contracted with, utilized a laser cutter. What builders are finding is a propensity for dimpled holes to crack. Um, the laser cutting is simply not as clean as it should be, and the jagged, if you will, cuts create the starts of tiny little tears in the metal. This is things that we are actively trying to avoid as builders through uh, stages of the build like deburring. Now, again, there is a huge discussion online, but it's one that I've largely stayed out of for a few reasons. One, uh, I don't have anything uh, I believe uh, of value to contribute to the discussion. Any questions I would have asked have already been asked by an individual or individuals much smarter than me. And anything I have to comment on, I frankly can wait and would rather give Van some time to respond. I am eager to know what that response will be. These uh, parts in question um, are not small parts and, and are integral to the, the subcomponents that I have completed to date. In fact, looking at my shelf now, there are no more parts in question. They are all in one form or another inside of my build. Uh, if these parts do in fact need to be replaced, it would mean substantial deconstruction and reconstruction of various components, if not a total rebuild of items like vertical and horizontal stabilizers, rudders, and elevators. It's something that keeps me up at night, uh, to be quite honest, and, and something that I'm very, very eager to hear a response from Vance. I will continue to take time out of my videos as little as possible, but enough to adequately respond to any breaking news that happens to come along and to update everyone here on how this might affect my build, my videos, the build order in which I'm proceeding, and anything else that I have to say. With that, hopefully we have some additional news soon, a response from Vans, something that'll allow me to sleep just a little better at night. Until then, let's get going on the rest of the build. We got a little bit left before we break for the week. I am incredibly excited to start the center fuselage. Uh, there's a lot going on here. It's a lot more complicated than what we just finished, uh, but it's a little bit smaller. So as far as work goes, I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but I'm gonna dive straight in. Uh, the first thing that we're doing here is making some spacers. That should be pretty straightforward. So here's the deal. The timing of these portions of the build could not be more awkward, made only worse by my previous interruption. So the rest of this episode is little more than a teaser of what's to come. The center fuselage is filled with fun fabrication and assembly and will likely require two full episodes to cover. So keep an eye out for those and make sure to subscribe if you haven't so far. I look forward to presenting those episodes in the coming weeks. For now, a sneak peek of what's to come.